Good day, beautiful people, and welcome back to Life Treasures and Golden Moments. This is Natalie Silva. I hope you're all doing okay out there today and enjoying the spring weather. And you know what? I cannot believe it's almost the end of April and I'm just doing my podcast. It's been a very busy month for me and I'm finally back in the studio just before we get to the month of May. So I have a couple of stories to share with you today that I hope you will enjoy. And the first one is on forgiveness. You know, relationships sometimes are broken because of jealousy, harsh words that people say to each other. Sometimes uh, it's about abuse or being neglectful to the person in the relationship even sometimes by a mistake or misunderstanding. Forgiveness is a word we love to hear, but we hate to practice. We love to hear it, but we hate to have to give it. Those precious relationships are too rare and too important to leave broken. Forgiveness is a great healing for a division in any relationship. Now today's story is called the Last Request, and it was written by author Zardet Beard. I hope you'll enjoy it. As a newlywed, I was one of those few people who always was looking forward to spending time with my in-laws, or outlaws for that matter. I just assumed we all would get along beautifully as one big happy family. I couldn't have been more wrong. All family members, myself included, brought their own ideas to the relationships. I had high hopes for my father-in-law and to be close friends, but it was just not meant to be. Every time we were in the same room, our power struggled, reared its ugly head, and we argued every single time, no matter how hard I tried to look the other way. I was certain he was deliberately picking fights with me, but who would exactly do that, and who would believe me anyway? Not wanting to put my husband in the middle, I was in a no-win situation. I was angry and saddened over the loss of potential friendship with this man, and I grew to resent him and tried to avoid getting together as much as possible. As my husband knew, his father was no picnic to get along with, but I was still confused over my perceived persecution. I had expected better. Then we got a call telling us the man was dying of cancer. When you get that call, all bets are off. We jumped into the car and drove out of state to see him. I had already convinced myself he would be scared and angry about dying, so I should just take whatever he was going to throw at me and be quiet. After all, the man was dying. Firmly committed to absorbing whatever he would say, I smiled when I saw him. We had only been at the house a short time when he called everyone into the dining room. I will never forget what happened next. Right there in the front of everyone, he admitted to starting fights with me on purpose. He detailed all of the times he started on an argument with me, and he explained that it was his own insecurities and not my fault. In that moment, I felt so completely vindicated and justified. I was certain I would jump from my seat and point an accusing finger at him with a loud, "Uh Aha! I told you all. I was right. But thankfully, that's not what happened at all. I looked at this man, really looked at this man, and saw the sadness in his face mixed with vulnerability that enveloped him. Before I could stop myself, I got up from the chair, put my arms around him, and thanked him and told him it was all okay. We cried together, he and I, And in that moment, it all changed. The distance between us, the tension and hostility were gone. It was as if we regarded each other for the first time. We had a good talk after that and exchanged a few laughs and knowing glances at each other. I grew closer to my father-in-law in two days than I had in a decade. If you ever get the chance, choose forgiveness over vindication. Forgiveness transcends space and time. It reaches back into the past to heal and reaches forward to build a bridge. Forgiveness was an amazing gift. What good advice. This next story that I'm going to share is also about good advice. 
and the author is Jude Walsh. And the title of the story is called, Tell Them You Love Them Now. F. Scott Fitzgerald once said, I love you, and that's the beginning and the end of everything. And that is so true in life. You love someone at the beginning until the end, and for all the things in between. So I hope you enjoy this story today called Tell Them You Love Them Now. It really will give you food for thought. As a preteen, I loved inspirational stories. I devoured Reader's Digest and the Guidepost. I treasured any heartwarming tale that gave me something to think about, and I tried to incorporate these lessons as I learned in my, into my life. One memorable story was about a person whose parent had died suddenly. The last words spoken between them had been words of anger. This was not an unfamiliar situation to someone my age. As we try to establish our individual selves, we push back against the people with whom we feel safe, the people we know won't turn away. But had it never occurred to me that my parents could die suddenly. My mother and I were close, but she was the rule keeper in our house, so we argued at times. But it wasn't Mum. I thought about it. It was my dad. Dad was a drinker and not one to share feelings. Other than anger or humor, he sometimes revealed when he was in a storytelling mood. I started to think about my dad and his life, and the emotional distance between him and his family. My dad went to work in the mines at age 13. After his much-loved dad was killed in a mining accident, he had grown up too fast and too hard. I decided that every night before I went to bed, I would tell Dad that I loved him. He was not a hugger, so I decided that when I said I love you, I would kiss him on top of his bald head. The first night I did this, he jerked his head away and looked at me like I was a crazy person. I was undeterred. Every night it was, good night, Dad, I love you, and a kiss on his head. After a while, I noticed he stopped pulling away and began to lean in a bit. Encouraged by this, I began to add a small hug. He did not resist. Then one night, weeks into the process, he said gruffly, I love you too. I paused for just a moment, struck by the wonder of it. I turned away quickly because I was not sure how Dad might respond to the tears spilling down my cheeks. This changed how I saw my dad. He was not the scary guy who drank too much and had unpredictable flashes of anger. He was the guy sitting at the kitchen table every night with a beer in front of him, often with his head in his hands. Who told me he loved me? I began to sit with him on those nights, and he seemed so talkative. We shared a love of dogs. I got him to tell me stories about his favorite dogs, especially Mike. We followed Dad down to the mines every day. These stories reveal the tender-hearted side of my dad. Many years later, after I was long married and living in another state, my father began to have some health problems. He refused to go to the doctor. My mother called and asked me to come home to talk some sense into him. He'll listen to you. I had already reserved my flight when she called to say, Never mind, your dad made a doctor's appointment. I decided to go home anyway and asked her not to tell dad because I, I wanted to surprise him. When he found me in the house sitting at the kitchen table in his spot, he was startled. In his usual brusque way, he blurted out, What are you doing here? Well, Mom said you weren't feeling well, so I came home. He turned toward me and looked me straight in, into my eyes. Well, now I know I'm loved. There was no hugging or overt emotion, just words from the heart. Now he knows he's loved. I do not think he could have made such a vulnerable statement if we had not had all those years of nightly I love yous. After he turned and left the room, my mother expressed her amazement as well. Jude, you were right to come anyway. Your father needed you. That doctor's appointment was the beginning of the end for my dad. He had fought off colon cancer more than 20 years before, but now was in the cancer fight that he could not win. Though we had surgery and we thought we had time left together, he died unexpectedly. Fortunately, I knew what my final words to him were. I had stopped at the hospital on my way to the airport. 
I was returning to my home to check on my family, planning to bring them back with me to have time with Dad. He was sound asleep. His nurse offered to wake him up, but I, I said, no, I want to carry with me the image of him sleeping so peacefully. So I just leaned in, kissed his warm head, rosy from the sponge bath she had just given him, and said, I love you, Dad. When I got to the funeral home and saw him in his casket, it didn't seem real, but when I leaned in and gave him a kiss on the top of his head to say one more time, I love you, the coldness of his skin made it clear he was truly gone. What was not gone is what I know. I am loved. I knew he went to his grave knowing he was loved too. And I'm eternally grateful for that long ago author who wrote the story that got me to say it now. Not to wait. I say I love you all the time to my son and my beloved dogs, to my extended family and my friends. The beautiful thing is, most of them say it back. Often like with my dad, they don't say it right away, but once we hit our stride, the rhythm is steady. Very good advice from a very smart author. So I hope those stories that I shared with you today will give you something to think about and um, try to forgive the people that hurt you and you hurt them and get it all worked out. And uh, also to share your love and tell the people that are in your life that you do love them because we all need to hear that especially now it's been a rough uh, season for everyone so my dear listeners friends thank you for joining me today i hope you have a beautiful rest of the month it's just about over and may day is on its way and so until next time take care stay well and may god bless and remember you are all much loved. And don't forget to share your love with others. It helps to make this world a better place. Good night for now. This is Natalie Silver with Life Treasures and Golden Moments.